Hello everyone, I welcome you all in today's session about hands-on Rust. In today's session, let's do some hands-on Rust coding. But before we go ahead, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the Edureka's YouTube channel to never miss out on any updates from us. Also, if you're looking for any of the certification courses from Edureka, do check out the link given in the description below. Let's move on to our agenda for today, which is how to install Rust, and then we look at some usages of cargo, and at last we'll do some hands-on using a program to illustrate some important concepts on Rust. Let's go ahead, guys. So for installing Rust, you can visit the website rustlang.org to access the official Rust website. After that, you need to go to the Get Started button on the web page. To access the installation page, you need to click it and you can see various options which are available on the installation page. So you can get it downloaded for either macOS, Linux or Windows. So for Mac and Linux, you need to open a terminal and run the following code. And then for Windows, you need to download the Rust installation executable from the website and then run it. However, I already have it installed. Then you will go through a number of prompts in which you will see the installation directory and you can alter the installation settings. To ensure that the Rust is correctly installed, you need to open a new terminal or a command prompt and enter the following code, which is Rust C version. This specifies the version for your Rust programming. Then comes, you need to locate the file using the terminal in the Rust programming. To locate a file using the terminal in Rust programming, you can use the change directory, which is cd command. And then you need to create a folder where you can store all your Rust programs. I have it installed under Rust tutorials. So once I copy the path, I need to paste it after the cd command and then run it. So now you can check that my current directory is under Rust tutorial. Once you are in the directory where the Rust file is located, you can execute Rust commands and compile and run the codes. Now let's talk about using Cargo. So the basics you need to know is the Cargo build and Cargo.toml. So what are they? When you run Cargo build, it compiles your Rust code and produces an executable based on which your project's configuration is defined. Cargo automatically resolves dependencies, downloads them if necessary, and builds the project along with other dependencies. Next comes Cargo.toml. So I use the Visual Studio Code Editor for compiling my Rust programming codes. So let me open my Visual Studio Code for the Rust tutorial. So guys, Cargo.toml is a configuration file which is used by Cargo to manage all the Rust projects and its dependency. It is typically located at the root of your project directory. Now let's write a function which returns the Fibonacci numbers in Rust programming. So what is a Fibonacci number? A Fibonacci program is a program that generates a Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where each number is the sum of the two numbers before it. Suppose if the first two numbers are 1 and 1, then the outcome is 2. And then for the next number as a result, we add 2 plus 1 which becomes 3, and then 5, and so on. So let's get ahead with the generating Fibonacci numbers. So the program defines a function Fibonacci that takes an unsigned 32-bit integer limit as input. So inside the Fibonacci function, we initialize two variables a and b to represent the first two Fibonacci numbers which are 0 and 1. Next we print a header message to indicate that it is the Fibonacci series. Then using a while loop, we generate Fibonacci numbers until A exceeds the given limit. In each iteration, we print the current Fibonacci number A. We calculate the next Fibonacci number by adding A and B and store it in a temporary variable called temp. You can see that we update A to hold the value of B and B to hold the value of temp. Next is the main function. Here we declare a variable limit and set it to 100 indicating the upper limit for generating Fibonacci numbers. We call this Fibonacci function with limit as the argument. Now let's run the code. So once you run this program, it will generate and print the Fibonacci numbers up to the given limit 100 in this case. The program uses a while loop and temporary variables to calculate the Fibonacci sequence iteratively. So guys, this is a basic example for the Rust programming. I hope you liked the video and if you did, hit the like button. And to stay notified for our further updates and Edureka, do click the bell icon.
Thank you for watching the video and wish you happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!